I don't think we realize what the Kansas City Chiefs just did. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is, trade proposal has Chiefs exchanging two draft picks for long-term starter. The Kansas City Chiefs could go in many different directions on day one of the 2024 NFL Draft. Take for example PFF Brad Spielberger's trade proposal in which the two-time defending Super Bowl champions trade up for the potential future starting left tackle for Kansas City. Spielberger proposed that the Chiefs trade the number 32 and number 95 picks to the Detroit Lions in exchange for the number 28 and number 164 picks. With the 28th overall pick, Kansas City would then select BYU offensive tackle Kingsley Swamataya. The Chiefs are sitting in a very familiar spot with the number 32 overall pick, and the last two teams they defeated en route to a Super Bowl in the Baltimore Ravens at number 30 and the San Francisco 49ers at number 31 also need reinforcements at tackle, Spielberger wrote on March 27th. Kansas City added a day three pick and a 2025 third rounder in the Algeria Sneed trade with the Tennessee Titans, and general manager Brett Veach has never been afraid to move up at the bottom of the first round for a player he covets, most recently landing all-pro cornerback Trent McDuffie. Swamataya earned an 86.1 pass-blocking grade in 2023 with just six pressures allowed, and he moves fairly well for his size. Spielberger continued. He may not be a plug-and-play starter, in need of development with perhaps another stopgap veteran like Donovan Smith in 2023, but the upside potential for the 21-year-old is very enticing. The Chiefs could move up for a player who is falling in the draft and is very high on their draft board, similar to when they traded up for McDuffie in 2022, but it's hard to imagine a scenario in which Kingsley Swamataya is high enough on Kansas City's draft board that the Chiefs feel the need to trade up in the first round to get him. Though Swamataya could develop into a solid starter, he's not projected to be an immediate NFL starter. That makes the Chiefs who are in win-now mode as they continue their quest for a three-peat and odd spot for Swamataya to land on day one of the draft. Swamataya is a dream prospect to draft and develop somewhere on day two. I worry about him being baptized by fire if he is drafted in the first round and called upon to start right away. PFF's scouting department wrote about Swamataya in the company's scouting report on him. Instead, the Chiefs could add a player in the first round that will have a more immediate impact on the field as a rookie, which could be a wide receiver, cornerback, or another offensive tackle, depending on how the board shakes out. The second story is Chiefs likely to bring in competition for Wanya Morris through NFL Draft. It's no secret that finding a starting left tackle remains one of the biggest checklist items for the Kansas City Chiefs this offseason, heading into next week's NFL Draft in Detroit. The Chiefs currently have second-year player Wanya Morris at left tackle. The team also has former starting right tackle Lucas Niang and former International Pathway Program player Chukwue Buka Godrick as backup options. Speaking to reporters on Monday, head coach Andy Reid said the four games in which Morris saw action in 2023 were a good introduction to the NFL, but he still has a lot of work to do. Coming in and having that experience of playing in four games, he has even a better feel for this offseason and what's going to be expected of him when he gets back and is put in that spot, said Reid. The rookie saw mixed results when called upon in 2023. According to Pro Football Focus, Morris allowed quarterback 24 pressures on just 235 passing snaps played. Reed said that Morris needs to take the next step in year two. There's got to be an improvement. There's got to be an urgency there, which I know he feels. Morris is currently back in Kansas City working on his craft. Prior to this, Reed said he was in Dallas working out with other linemen. He was able to get in that mix and work with those guys. So it looks like he's in pretty good shape right now and I think he understands what it takes to be an every-down guy at that spot. If Morris wants the starting job, he will have to take it. There'll be competition, added Reed. He's got to make sure that he takes care of business here. Ideally, the Chiefs would like to add competition for Morris at the top of the draft. Reed acknowledged on Monday that the team is looking to add wide receiver and offensive tackle depth in the draft, but added that when you're picking at number 32, you never know what the draft board will look like. It's a great thing on one hand to be 32nd, said Reed, because you've done okay the season before. But that's a long wait. 
and you better really stay true to the board what's there and take the best player you possibly can at that spot. We've got spots in depth that we could use really everywhere. But you know we should have, when it's all said and done, we should have players in there ready to go. Sorry about this Kansas City Chiefs Nation, and apologies for another swift reference, but in the world we live in now, get ready. Because the haters gonna hate, 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 hate. You've put up with a lot of vitriol this past week as pundits pilloried the defending Super Bowl champions and heir apparent to the Tom Brady Bill Belichick New England Patriots. And after winning again Sunday, more is on the way. The good news for Chiefs fans was that while the haters were busy loathing the Chiefs and their consummate winning quarterback Patrick Mahomes, all Chiefs fans had to do to feel better was recall another line from the same song. Players gonna play, 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 play. And that's what happened at Super Bowl LV in Las Vegas as the Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 in overtime, winning the third of the last five Super Bowls. The players played, 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 played. Mahomes threw and ran for 399 total yards and led the Chiefs on a 13-play, 75-yard overtime drive that had ended with a touchdown pass completed with three seconds on the clock. And he did so with the kind of cool, clinical focus we've come to expect of him when the game is on the line. Mahomes' leadership earned him his third MVP trophy, but made me ask afterwards why were Kansas City and Mahomes cast as villains in the week leading up to the championship? Yes, I made the case for cheering on San Francisco quarterback Brock Purdy because of his truly extraordinary and historic rise from being named Mr. Irrelevant as the last player drafted in 2022 to being a Super Bowl starting quarterback less than two years later. But we never implied that pulling for the underdog meant diminishing the legacy of resiliency and adaptability that distinguished the Chiefs. In a sit-down with CBS Sports' Nate Burleson, Mahomes reflected on the emerging portrayal of his team as the team everyone loves to hate, a designation formerly given to the Patriots. You definitely have gotten that sense this year, Mahomes said. I think this is the year that has actually kind of come out that way. That's part of it, you turn into that villain. You turn into that team that everybody doesn't want to win. You have to embrace that too, in order to be great. The third story is Chiefs kickoff phase one of the off-season training program. The Kansas City Chiefs took one step closer to football season on Monday as phase one of the off-season training program officially got underway. Phase one allows for voluntary team meetings in addition to organized strength and conditioning workouts. The Chiefs will once again conduct this portion of the program, which spans two weeks virtually, continuing the setup that Kansas City has utilized in recent years. It's a short off-season, so it gives the guys an opportunity to stay away from here, but at the same time, get a ton of work done, said head coach Andy Reid. It's been effective for us. The guys have come back in great shape and knowing what their responsibilities are. Additionally, quarterback Patrick Mahomes, as he has done in recent off-seasons, is already off to a head start working with a number of the Chiefs' pass catchers in Mahomes' home state of Texas. The guys can hear from me because we get our workouts in before the meetings. They can hear how I explain things and what I'm thinking. Then they go into the meeting room and they can hear how the coaches explain it, Mahomes said. We kind of blend that together. As for next steps, phase two, which permits for limited on field work, will begin later this month. Phase three, which includes organized team activities, then begins on May 20th and allows for non-padded 11-on-11 drills. The off-season training program concludes with mandatory minicamp on June 11th. It's all to say that while the regular season may be five months away, the preparation for the upcoming campaign has officially started. Two Dallas County residents are suing Chiefs receiver Rashi Rice and fellow driver Teddy Knox for damages of at least $10 million, according to a lawsuit filed Thursday in Dallas County, Texas. On March 30th, Edvard Potrovsky and Irina Gromova were traveling in their 2022 Lexus 350 SUV, according to the suit, when their vehicle was involved in a multi-car crash with Rice and Knox's vehicles on the highway. Rice, driving a leased Lamborghini Urus, and Knox, a Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, crashed into the median to start a chain reaction of vehicles, which the suit said caused to rotate into the middle of the road at a high speed and eventually crashed to a standstill. According to the Dallas Morning News, 
the arrest affidavit in the case stated Rice was driving 119 mph some 4.5 seconds before the crash. Knox was going 116 mph but had slowed to 91 miles per hour about 1.5 seconds before according to the affidavit acquired the morning news. Dallas police announced last week that Rice, 23, and Knox, 21, each face eight charges for their roles in the crash. Rice turned himself in to authorities late last week before getting released on bond. The lawsuit claims the plaintiff's injuries include trauma to the brain, lacerations to the face, requiring stitches, multiple contusions around the body, disfigurement, internal bleeding, and other internal and external injuries. Dallas attorney Sanjay S. Mather, in the suit on behalf of the plaintiffs, asks Rice and Knox to cover damages such as past and future medical expenses, physical pain and impairment,